Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Switching Stances. I am one of your hosts, Tyler, joined by my good friend, my good buddy, Ollie, aka Gaz. How's it going, mate? It's going well. It's going well. I was expecting you to say as always there for some reason. I don't know. If mate, I, can... I always I, I always almost say it. Every time. <laughs> I have to actively stop myself from saying as always. Because it's Maybe what I, I would just that. say. It's not even about yeah. the brand or anything. It's just what we said before it was even a brand. Yeah. For those who don't know, my old podcast, my old days, for those who think, I've got a lot of messages from people that have, you know, that just are like, I really like what you're doing, you know, keep it up. Or and they're like, just think this is, you're pretty good at this. You should keep going, you know? And I'm like, <laughs> yeah. I've been podcasting for 10 years, hundreds of episodes. Of multiple, <laughs> this is like my six different podcast series i've done but yeah, it's my first it's mma so it's like there's there's new fans whole new audience in. yeah yeah um yeah it's crazy it's crazy um but yeah it's just it's a whole different world we're 10 episodes in now mate fuck really yeah so 10 episodes bro this is the 10th episode mad. Of switching that's madness we're we're killing it i'm I'm happy with where we're at um i mean i would have liked to have done a bit more recently because i've was really loving um i haven't been able to spend as much time on the on the other social media stuff like the instagram sure. reels yeah and i mean and mate, like that as much as i want. got a fucking fight coming up yeah I, i'm in training camp now and i like oh, bro so this will probably be the last episode for like three weeks um yeah until because i just i said to you i was like bro i've got so i fight in three and a half weeks and i just mm-hmm. said dude i've got to um maybe uh, there'll be a day i'm like bro let's record today because i'm really keen to talk about xyz um sure or it might just come out at a weird time um but i'm just all consumed by this and it, just with work and you know on top of a fight camp and on top of everything else in my life I'm just trying to pull things back over the next couple of weeks because it's like I can't think about anything else but this fight. And I'm at like I'm five weeks in almost to a um, eight-week training camp. And it's at that point where we've had to hit a new level this week. Mm. And it's taken me to a dark place that I spent a good fucking hour in the shower after yesterday's training, just decompressing, like (laughs) mentally coming down from like what was just going on and just thinking about and going through fight scenarios and what I even just going through the training, going through fight scenarios, going through what, what you did in training? How could I use that? What worked? What didn't work? And just like, it was just like that push that our coach had to give us to sort of be like, what the fuck are you guys doing? Step it up this is how far away we are. You need to hit sure. a new, you know, pace. I expect yeah, sure. more now. And we needed that. We were getting a bit like, oh, we all love each other. All really good mates. And we're just having fun. And we're training yeah. and a bit matey. And he's like, nah, fuck all that. You know, stop. You're not yeah. fucking mates when you're in the ring. And, and we're like, yeah, shit, you're right. And <laughs> it's the switch I needed. I don't know about the other boys, but i tell you what, I felt like, destroyed after the session but like mentally was like that's what i needed like killer mode yeah. war mode being entered um so i'm feeling ready i've picked out my like fight shorts i'm pretty sure for the day just getting keen getting my mouth like proper mouth guard sorted um just doing all the little things now where it's all becoming very very real the weights coming along nicely i'm hungry all the time and this yeah, fucking okay. sucks um, yeah i can imagine it's it's yeah it's it's a lot of training and not a lot of eating at the moment um so yeah i'm a i'm lightweight so Mm -hmm. which is in mma about 70.3 kilos but i'm fighting because it's muay thai kickboxing um we've sort of got a like a more a lot more weight classes so i'm actually weighing in about 72 will be i i believe my fight weight um what's it's 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 lower down Oh, sorry, it's higher up. Yeah, well, we got a bit of an option, and they're sort of just like, well, well what, what weight do you want to fight at? And I just thought, oh, nice. I don't okay. if I don't need to cut to one fifty five, and I can just no. cut to one sixty. I'm gonna cut to one sixty. Yeah. So that's sort of what I decide. I was like, let's just say five extra pounds, because who, you know what I mean? Like, who gives a fuck? Yeah, like especially if you obviously, I don't know if you plan on fighting more after this, but if yeah, you do, I don't, there's... I don't expect this to be my 
um, last fight. Sure. In which case, then, like, if you do, why kill yourself early? You know. Yes. Exactly. Why make stuff yeah. difficult for yourself until it needs to be? Yeah, and and I've not done a lot of. I've only done one weight cut before. Um, yeah, and I just don't want to like fucking go too hard early, and it, that was miserable. This is going a lot smoother already. Yeah, this is going a lot smoother. Like, I am three and a half weeks out. Seventy two kilos is what I've got to weigh. I'm seventy five and a half. Mm-hmm. Waking up seventy five mm-hmm. and a half. Like that's fuck all. You know what I mean? Like it's fuck all to lose, really. Yeah, when no, really. I'm making it super easy for myself, dieting early out, um, yeah, feeling good. Like, I'm mentally really clear-headed, eating really clean, training my fucking ass off, and, yeah, hit just this new level, and, yeah, my... It's like the next level. I don't know if it's the next level up. It's like the next level up, but also the next level into hell. So it's just yeah, a bit sure. of like a double-edged sword um, where you go to the dark places, Um and I think I'm just like, oh, I just want to fight. My Instagram, like, search page is just food. It's just Aww. all it is. I'm such a fucking fat kid at heart. Um, huh. And I'm just, like, torturing myself watching watching food videos and just, like, saving recipes. I'm like, oh, I'm going to make that when I can eat. <laughs> Man, I miss my fucking When I can wings, eat. Bro. Jesus. <laughs> Mate, I miss my Korean yeah. wings. You have no idea. This is the longest I've gone without it in years. Oh, it's heartbreak and stuff. I've got to try them. When I I do inevitably come over, I'm going to have to try them. Because they're the only thing that you, like, regularly talk about. Dude, I've had them once a week for four years. Four plus years, once a week. I fucking... I have the owner's number on fucking speed dial, bro. (laughs) I actually have his mobile number. I call him directly. It's what I do. You know, the... You know, the only time I've, I've avoided eating those Korean wings was when in the build up to Korean Zombie vs. Volkanovsky because I refused to have Korean food until Volk did what he had to do to the Korean Zombie <laughs> of Korea as a whole, as a uh, collective. Gaz. No, that's not true. I'm just joking. I definitely ate wings every week. You were just hurting <laughs> a Korean man's business out of your national. No, I would pride. never do it. I would never do that. <laughs> I would never do that. I definitely ate wings every single week, so I don't get it to a Sure. Show. I may- maybe I had a week off and I was like, you know what? Fuck that. That was a dumb joke. <laughs> I'm not doing that. I'm eating these fucking wings. But I'm not now. Not now. No. Um, thankfully, also, I'm not much of a drinker anyway, bro. I don't really drink all that much. So the whole no alcohol thing's been so... That's been easy. That's been so easy. I started yeah. out like a few weeks before I even started camp because I was like, yeah, I'll just start now. So. Oh, I, actually, that's not true. I think I had one beer on the weekend before camp started. So I was like, let's just okay. have a beer because I can't. But you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's yeah, not going to make a difference. Three weeks either. between that one, yeah. Yeah. But look, man, yeah, if we're in it and I just, it's all consuming and there'll be more details. There'll be more th- stuff on Switching Stances on, on my on my social media. Um, I'm sure on yours as, as well, Gaz. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I'll... For my fight, this dates, um, posting photos, I'll post a link. I There may be a payment if you want to watch online. So if you don't, don't worry about it. I'm, I'm sure I'll post videos of it from phones and shit anyway. Like you'll see, if not the whole fight, certainly clips and highlights. Um regardless for no costs but um if you do, were that into it you're like fuck it i'll drop a couple bucks and watch how the fight live on the stream fucking love that or if you live in the brisbane area when i post the location fucking buy a ticket and come watch um i'm gonna have so many fucking people watching this fight live bro i've told everybody like <laughs> i've literally just been like fuck it i'm all in come along who cares whatever um i wonder i wonder if i could screen record it for you i wonder how good their anti i'd love i'd, I'd love screen recording software that. is yeah that would be good if you could i'll give it a go i'll give it a go allegedly not i'll get I allegedly i'll get james to do it as well allegedly <laughs> it'd be cool if james okay. could stream it that would be cool that would be cool allegedly that would be really cool allegedly <laughs> allegedly yeah 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 allegedly but just to be cool the 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 four pillars community getting together um on a stream to watch me in this new world it, it would be really cool if it goes well at least <laughs> if not you get a live reaction of james yeah no bro <laughs> I'm, I'm, you get I'm fucking not, spark no, come on bro come but on. no won't, ha- won't happen good. so it doesn't matter well, but. well it definitely won't happen um certainly won't happen uh i'm 
yeah, I, mate, I'm so confident. Um, and and e- and even um, if it's not a fucking molly whopping, which it will be, um, I'm just keen for a fucking scrap anyway. Like, there's no yeah. to me. I can't. I can't lose. I can't lose. This is. It's not about winning anyway to me this is all about growth and growth as a person that's why i do this sort of shit so i love challenging myself with this stuff and Mm. it's why i love this sport um it's made me a better person and i just you know i've got so much joy out of it and um it builds people up and that's why i've committed so much to this and that's why i want to step in there at the end of the day um yeah just for that growth and i've already grown with all the chat, there's like, there's been a lot of shit for the last five, six weeks with this camp, even heading into the camp to mentally overcome and deal with. And there's been lots of battles and hurdles and there's I'm sure more to come as well, but yeah. we've been getting them. We've been conquering. We've yeah. been conquering. No, good stuff. Yeah. Good stuff. Yeah. You've, um, you've finished university Gaz. Congratulations. I have done that. I have done, done. that as of yesterday. Dude. Just want to give you a round of applause. Huge stuff. Yeah. That's a big life moment. It's weird. It's weird to sort of have the last three years of my life all culminate mm. in the... Mm-hmm. Like, it doesn't feel like it's over, especially because mm. I'm one of the first people to finish, so all of my housemates are still working, my girlfriend's still working. Um, So there's not the sort of sense of celebration yet, which well, I'm sure will come in sort of, uh, you know, early June. <sighs> Yeah. Um, because everyone else is fucking next to the grindstone themselves. Um, but it's just cool, cool to me, cool for me. Yeah. Do you like that one? You, Do you like the to the grindstone? Yeah, I really like that one. That was a throwback. Loved it. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, I get it, man. I get it. It's it's hard to celebrate when the people you want to celebrate with can't celebrate. Um. Hmm. So you 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 share it. You share the highs. You share the lows. So. They're still in it. There's still a little bit of you that's that's in it, so I understand that. But uh, not long. Everyone will be done. Yeah. Um, and you can celebrate and, and head into that next chapter. Yeah, I can't wait to start. There's two things I've been really missing, and it's a watching fights. Like I can't wait. I'm gonna I'm gonna write something about Kaikara France, Amir, uh, Amir Albazi. I'm gonna write something about Benil Darius, Charles Oliveira. You know, I'm gonna I'd like yeah. to get something larger done on Volkanovski. Um, which I'm not gonna say what because I'm gonna jinx it if I do. But yeah. it would be cool to get something done like that. Um, and then watching films. I've not watched a film in like three weeks, and I fucking love films. Mate, me too. I love that. But though I feel like I've been watching a few more things through Fight Camp because with the limited time I do have spare, I just am on the couch. Sure, you watched like, um, Banshees of Insurance, literally- didn't you? I did, bro. I loved it. It's so good. I loved it. It was it's a fantastic so movie. Fantastic yeah. movie. It took me a while to be like, what the fuck is th- does this mean? Like, sure. what's the point? What's the and point? And then when I yeah. finally got it, I was like, oh, yeah, that makes that makes sense. Yeah. Because I was like, it can't be. Oh, maybe. And then, I, yeah, it just was like, yeah, it made sense. And Have you seen... Have you seen anything else from Martin McDonough? Um, he made three billboards outside. He of made three year. billboards. He did. Yeah, love that movie. Yeah, fucking love that um, movie. That's the one I'm going to watch tonight. I've not seen that yet, you, but oh, dude, fantastic movie. I like yeah. that better. Yeah, three billboards. I think that's a better movie, but it's just like it's a bit more on the nose, probably. So it depends. It's a very different movie. No, that's um, have, so. You, you haven't seen In Bruges then. No, I haven't. Oh, dude, you'd fucking love it, Bruce. It's oh. so funny. It's I've it's been... also on Netflix, and it's the most I've laughed at anything. I've been watching Barry, the HBO. Show. Okay, I um, no, I don't know, dude. Really fucking good. I've they, and they're like HBO quality writing, really good, and it's um um Bill Hader. Yeah, um, the, yeah, 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 and. But he's like he writes and directs the show, but he stars in it, and he's mm. it's a very serious character. But it's just got this bit of humor to it that's hard to explain because he's a he's a killer, um, ex marine, 
um, that's paid to to kill people, but he's not. But he's sort of just manipulated and controlled by people in his life, and he doesn't really like want to be a bad guy, and he tries to sort of live a double life, and um, he's just sort of scarred by his past. Um, but it's a very psycho analytical show with these bits of humor in between that's hard to explain it's like a breaking bad tone meets sure. some sort of weird brooklyn 99 tone that shouldn't work Ooh. but just fucking works like mm-hmm. it works so well in the humor is in the seriousness it's like at the moments that are supposed to be funny you may not laugh but at the moment supposed to be serious you almost they they leave you f- hanging for f- certain moments that you and there's those genre crossovers yeah you're like am i supposed to laugh here because this is super serious but i think they yeah, want I love, me to laugh at this i love films like that i love when you get sort of tricked into laughing and then taken back out of it and yeah. ma- like it, it makes the horror aspects and the sort of weirdness more effective because you get comfortable with laughing yeah and vice versa yes. it makes the humor more effective and- because you're not expecting it yeah, exactly. But then it'll hit you with these serious moments where it's not funny at all. No. And you're just like, oh shit, this show is for real. Fuck. Like, and then it just will hit you really hard. It's it's fantastic. I'd highly recommend Barry. And they're like half an hour episodes, just perfect length. If you just want to watch one and, and come back to it later. Or you can sit there and binge fucking six in a row in three hours. Like, mm-hmm. it's all you. It's not this show where you're like sitting down, you're like, this is an hour and ten for one episode. Okay. Like, you need to commit a lot of time even to finish one episode, let alone two mm-hmm. or three. So, <clears throat> highly recommend Barry. I've watched, like, three seasons in the last five weeks. Um, <clears throat> that's been fantastic. But anyway, this is an MMA podcast. Or a combat sport This is that. This is that. That's what we we're do. talking about film and TV, but we love that shit. <laughs> we love that shit. <laughs> Bring it back. Speaking Bring of back Netflix and, and film and TV, though, <clears throat> Conor McGregor's oh, docuseries came yes. out. I watched the first episode. Um, between work and training today. Um, Where solid. does it pick up? Is it um, cowboy? Picks up, no, it picks up with Khabib. The build okay. up to Khabib and the Khabib sure. fight and the after the Khabib fight. And it was fantastic. I must say. it. Was, I must say. Like, there's some things that are obviously, like, are a bit exaggerated um, or, like, focused on that might not have been it's certainly not the way I remember the build up in How? some regards. In what way? I don't want to say. I don't want to say. Okay. I let, you, I let you just watch and enjoy. It's nothing like major. I was happy to just buy into the way they're telling the story, and it's definitely from Connor's perspective. Um, but really well done, really fun. The and to look at that period of time that I feel like I remember so well and feels so recent, to look at it in like a historical lens is very interesting already. To be like, fuck, this was like a legendary fight and moment. And I'm watching it back on a documentary that is like movie quality. But I like this just happened. If I feel like it yeah. just happened, even though it didn't, it's already legendary. And and to see it told is is very, very fun. Um so I'm excited to watch the rest. I think Cowboys the next episode, and nice. then it'll be the Dustin period. There's four episodes. Um, okay, yeah, the, so it'll be about Dustin an hour post Dustin. Um but so far really good which is great because there was also the conor mcgregor movie notorious and that yes. sort of finished around floyd mayweather so this is sort of like the perfect follow-on from that it has like a five minute recap of that and then it just goes into khabib so it's sort of like you you have that doc docu sort of series of his life from that first movie to now the series they just follow each other perfectly almost so highly, we, i'm, I'm gonna definitely watch it recommend. And I think just being in fight camp, it's a good thing to watch this downtime, but also make still keeps me thinking and even gives me some inspiration because there's no doubt <clears throat> I, I wouldn't be here and I wouldn't be fighting. I never would have trained if it wasn't for Conor McGregor. Sure. You know, that's when his early, early days, like the Dustin fight was right when I was really getting into the sport. The first Dustin fight in 2014. Um, yeah. and, and, and it was him and his like passion, the way he talked about the sport people that are fans now probably think that's crazy, but it's what he was like. He was so different early on. And when you watch interviews with him, talked about different things and the way he talked, he didn't talk 
as much shit and he would have these moments where he was talking about the martial arts, the training, the work ethic. Those were his focuses. That's what I thought about when I thought of Conor McGregor. I thought, yes, he's the entertainer, but he's also like the work ethic motivated, hardworking guy that's come from nothing. But that side of him has been sort of lost in the fame and success. And I feel mm. like new fans now, when we don't talk about that Connor anymore at all, it's not even brought up, but that was a real Connor that existed and right. motivated me um, when I was, you know, 19 years old to do, to take my first fucking MMA class. That was eight, eight years ago, more than eight years ago. And now I'm fighting. So it changed my life. So it's, it's, yeah. it's interesting that this series is out now before, right before my first fight and I'm watching it. I'm just sort of like seeing him, the way I remember him. Yeah, right. Like, because I feel like the only thing that we ever show on the internet or on TV or anything of Connor is he has to be doing crazy shit. Whereas I remember Connor being chill half the time. And I feel like we don't see that anymore and watching this docuseries, I'm like, this is the shit I remember. Where he was funny. Connor's so fucking hilarious, dude. Oh, he's and so just funny. Effortlessly, effort, effortlessly funny. Like, he's still, he is still so funny, though. I, <laughs> and that is... That is the one thing about Connor that has not faded with fame. Like, fuck it. Have no. you seen the have you seen the clip from Tough where he's talking to Chandler? Yeah. And he's you'll like, do what you're told. told. Yeah, you'll do what you're told. Oh, so good. <laughs> so good. He and his fucking, fucking his little man. voice note, his tweet and deletes. <laughs> like tweet someone's are phenomenal. <laughs> someone someone put up a like a list of all of Gilbert Burns' accomplishments. And then he and then he just quoted it and said, Yeah, but his name's Gilbert. <laughs> it's like they don't you know he doesn't he doesn't have beef, he doesn't have beef with gilbert burns there's no like no. ongoing feud it's just no. funny it's just it's to be just funny terrific fucking content for everyone yeah oh that's great it is yeah there's definitely funny moments and they, they even show which is a bit silly in the first episode i don't want to spoil it but they show his community service that he had to do they're filming him do the community <laughs> service for getting arrested for the dolly and they're showing him, like, looking at motivational quotes on the wall of this church he's cleaning, and he's like, this is inspiring me. And I'm like, what's happening? Like, it was just a bit much. That was probably a bit much. But great stuff still also, if you want to suspend your disbelief. Sure. Funny fucking funny. shit like that. Yeah, funny fucking shit like that. But, this, mate, there's been a lot on. There's been a lot of fights. There's been a lot of announcements. Where do we a start, lot of announcements. I've got a little list, um, Kim, let's, let's, which let's, sort let's of just go it. in chronological order. Um, one of them will circle back round to. But okay. first off, have you seen that there are rumours of a booking between Brian Ortega and Giga Chikadze? I've seen that. It's which is, fight, I think, right fight. Yeah, T City can fuck him up. Let's I think go. so. I think probably Brian kills him. Um, I think so. Too. I think Brian's I been underrated now. Yeah, Good. same. I hope so. Perfect for the comeback, but he's gone through a breakup, so Yeah. Well maybe he's gone he'll through a breakup with a smoke show with all with the Even more respect. vicious. Well will he? Or or maybe. is she breaking him? Some some I hope not. the same. That'd be upsetting. Some blokes ain't the oh, same. Fucking speaking of being broken, actually, have you seen Tim Elliott's fucking thing? I have seen that. And that you have seen that. Is fuck it's tough. It's tough. That's tough. Yeah. You hate Jesus. To see it, bro. You absolutely hate to see that. For those who don't know, yeah. you have to go far to find if you go to Tim Elliott's Twitter or Instagram. It's fucking yeah. tough. What he's going through. I don't really want to talk about it. No, I, d- I didn't. I just, you brought it up. Um, not yeah, you didn't bring it I up, see. but you. Yeah. yeah. No, you brought it up. Don't put that. I, yeah, I know. <laughs> no, I didn't. Don't you I put totally. that in on <laughs> you, Bobby. No way. I don't. No, that was totally me. But, um. <laughs> But you sort of gr- yeah. uh, led me there by accident. Um, you can take you can take like twenty percent. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Aspinall and Tybur- Tom Aspinall and Marcin Tybura. That's have been booked. that's, a, that's uh, dude. That's a bullshit fight. That is a bullshit fight. It's a it's, it's an you easy know it's Tom. a bullshit fight. It's an easy it's an Tom. easy Tom dog. Easy. If he Tom looks dog. if he looks anything like the guy before his knee exploded. Which I think he did, like in just seeing him inspiring. He looks yeah. slick. He looks clean. He looks like he can move around on it. Yeah. So I trust that he's gonna be good. I trust that he'll probably fucking make Tibera eat shit. Yeah, he has to. Um, he actually has to. 
yeah. it's what it's designed yeah, yeah. for. It's what yeah. it's designed for. Yeah, it's in London. It's Tom Maspinall's big comeback. And it has fucking no other fights. It's yeah. got like what? It, um... They've given up on these UK cards, hey? Yeah, they fully have. They fully have. Just like Paddy's not around. So fuck it. Oh, we'll just God. sort of slap something together. They have no, honestly, thank God. Um, yeah. And Darren Till's Maybe. left as well. Like this, yeah. that's that's a big blow for UK MMA, to be honest. I mean, it is it is in terms of marketability. It's not in yes. terms of talent. But <laughs> no, it's probably not, isn't it? Oh, no, such a shame. I love Darren. It Till. is a such real a shame. shame. I such yeah, a, such I, a big fan. I was such a believer last fight. I was such he, a like. Me too. He he convinced me. He fucking convinced me that he was going to beat Drikas. He was so like he lost calm Drikas. and pussy. He was so Dude, cool just before Rob, the fight. Please kill him, Rob. For just please, Rob. <sighs> please, Rob. Yeah, yeah. I don't. You know. <sighs> you would just, hope. I, yeah, you just. I I love a good revenge beating, like that mm. Ukrainian guy that like beat Shogun and then shoved it in his face, and then <laughs> Carlos Carlos Allberg just shut him the fuck up. And I was like, I just love that he got put shut some, up. Revenge put some for Shogun. Respect on Ihor Patera. Patera. Yeah. Yeah, okay. the jewelers. Doesn't matter. Oh, and, I love and them. just and, and and a and a CKB Kiwi New Zealand boy was able to fucking put him out. Love to see it. Shout yeah, out to well, fucking Carlos. You know, you know, he he's just lucky that Patero didn't have his gun on him that time. Yeah, it's true. It's a good point. Wouldn't I'd like to a... think I had something to do with it. I gave Carlos the magical touch when I saw him last. For his next oh, fight, yeah. when we sh- when I shook his hand, I gave him the power. You get, oh, yeah, gosh. sure. So really, you're one and zero already. I'm already one and zero. I got really at light heavyweight, sure. nonetheless. Yeah, dude, I'm a fucking beast, bro. Don't forget it. <laughs> Don't forget it. Light heavyweight, lightweight, all the same. It's all the same. <laughs> it's all light work, bro. It doesn't yeah. matter. It doesn't matter. Um, it's quite oh, good, no, actually. That's that's quite, that's quite a good line. Oh, thanks. Thanks, thanks, bro. Right. Use that. Mate, I could talk a bit of shit if I was good enough. <laughs> if I was a good enough fighter. I'm a good fighter, but I'm not going to be in the fucking UFC, I tell you that. But man, if I was, I know what I could have been. I grew up on fucking pro wrestling, cunt, don't you forget. What what, what would you do? Obviously, you are fighting, so like the possibility is always there. Yeah. What would you do if someone fucking came along and scouted you for the UFC? I, like, would you turn it down? Or would you have to sit there and think about that for a while? Would I turn it down? No. <laughs> no. Okay. So you would no. go for that. Hundred. Well, because I know, I know, I know, you've talked about that in the past, like, like years and years ago. Um, what? Like me going to the UFC? Like no, no, like not as in like a no career. No fucking prospect. way. I've never. Even... No, 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 not as in. A, but like I know we've talked about Just it. Just want to let like, everyone ne- know that I've you never like, thought no. I'm good enough. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. But just, just like we were just shooting the shit. And I know you yeah. were like, I wouldn't do it. So, real. Oh, Something, okay. Yeah. Mm, yeah. No, the, my perspective's definitely shifted on that. Then. No, no. Fair enough. It's been a couple of years. Just, bec- just because, yeah, I've been. Tra- well, yeah, so many more years of training, and this has been the most serious training I've done in the last probably three years, mm. or two years, I should say. Probably add a year off. Where I was like, literally, like, well, I'm not going to compete, and I, that's when I was focusing on running and triathlons. And marathons. also, if you're struggling, you can always just put on a couple extra pounds, move up to middleweight, and like you'll probably get a shot. Probably, <laughs> and I mean, it's a, it's the right country for it. We fucking yeah, belt down here. <laughs> you know, I'll fight Izzy and Rob. Fuck it. Oh, that'd be a shame. Yeah, no, I wouldn't know who to root for. Well, I would, I would against <laughs> Izzy, but I don't know about Rob. You'd root for Rob? What? <laughs> <laughs> No, I get it. I would root for Rob too. I wouldn't even want to hit him. I'd get in the middle and I'm like, come on, bro. I'm not fucking fighting Rob. I wouldn't do it. No, fucking no way I'd fight Rob. No way I'd fight Izzy. Well, I mean, obviously, but, uh, you know, I'm saying Yeah, yeah, right. If I was good enough to, if I was good enough to, I wouldn't want to do it. Not that I am, because I'm not. (laughs) Um, But don't get twisted. I'm damn good. And I'm going to fucking... Uh, show that in a couple of weeks. So I'll pack up yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm excited. Me too. I'm excited. And then I'm just um, excited to eat fucking food. I'm a smash fucking chicken. I'm going to get so fat. fat big big one food. yesterday. Big, big one yesterday. Um, yeah. And Garni. 
We finally PFL? know. Well, we we really we've known for fucking however long. Yeah, but we know it's PFL. It's now official that he's signed yeah. with the PFL, the Professional Fight League. I which I love it. I it's a, it's the perfect fit for Angano for sure. Yeah, I also don't really care to watch him fight though. Really? Oh, like, that's fucking. I will bad, watch. Hey? It. I I will watch it out of like support. Sure. Um, and I'll pay for. But will you watch the second one? Um, like that's the sort of know. thing where you're like, that's, I, that's my main thing. Will I watch the first one? Pay for it? Yes. Out of support and love for Francis? Yes. Mm-hmm. Am I really like? A, are you going to see me talking about it? I'll be like, guys, Francis is fighting this weekend. I'll just be like, well, yeah, no, the Francis fights on. I'll watch that. It'll be way more casual. It's not going to be excitement. Because like, have you watched PFL as a product before? Yeah, a couple of times. Probably watched two cards. PFL. Yeah, I think I've done the same. I've yeah. I've mainly watched it for Brendan Lockman because I, I quite I like his sort of, a Kayla his Harris sort of... card. I think actually oh, both cards I watched with Kayla Harris. Harrison. Kayla Harrison. Harris. Yeah. Kayla Harrison. Um. Yeah. Both of them were Kayla, Kayla Harrison cards. Wait, was did Kayla fight on one of the? Because Anthony Pettis was on one of them. Yeah. I think I so. Feel like they were both on the same card for once. They might have been. Yeah, maybe I'm totally wrong. Or they did, they were different ones, I don't know. Anyway, um, I watched P- a Pettis one. And maybe it was mm-hmm. his first, first one. PFL. I watched I, I watched the last year's finals, and I watched the, the... Like, whatever the first bracket was of the most recent one, where, like, Lognan knocked yeah. out Marais. Yes. Yeah, right. Yeah. I did watch, uh, though, I, I watched... um. Uh, the lightweight fight just recently with fucking Hurricane. Um, oh, Shane Burgess and Sh- Shane Burgess. Is yeah, that I watched Shane Olivia... Burgess' fight. That was really good. Evan really Messier. Good that fight. Yeah, yeah, that was a great fight. Evan yeah, Messier's so fucking Shane. good, man. He's good, man. Came out of nowhere. Underrated. Yeah, super underrated. Like Shane Burgess, a fucking. He's a motherfucker. Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's it's very guys. rare that you get Dana White admitting to fucking up when it comes to letting people go. He normally tries to tries yeah. to trash the product as much as possible, um, mm-hmm. so that people when they get them, all the fucking casual fans have this image in their head of them being shit and useless and didn't want to fight or you know greedy or whatever. You know whatever they whatever he can get away with saying, he'll try and say. With Shane Burgos, he was just like, no, we fucked up. That was our bad. Yeah. Yeah, but good for him. He's getting the bag. Yeah, as is Francis. Oh, yeah. And and out of yeah. support of that, I'll I'll definitely watch the first one. Will I watch the second one? That remains to be seen. I reckon they're gonna if, them guaranteeing two million. Here's the yeah. other thing: them guaranteeing two million Dude, for his opponent. opponent. Um, and all the other different business ventures being the head of um chairman of PFL Africa. Like it's all amazing, the, what he's done, the contract he's gotten. But that two million is gonna draw. Big name heavyweights that have no business fighting anymore. Back for bags. Yeah. You are going to see now name value former UFC Bellator heavyweights fight Francis. Mm-hmm. You're going to see yeah. some big heavyweight names coming to PFL. And that's what PFL knew as well. They're like, oh, well, we're not going to give two million to fucking nobody. By us agreeing, yes, we'll pay two million whoever you fight. Yes, that's a big investment for them. But also it's going to draw some people. big name, big name heavyweights. Yeah, you, like you know what I mean. Uh, there's going to be some big name heavyweights coming to PFL. I guarantee you, but they, they have no business being in there. With like, would I want to see Mark Hunt Francis? You know what I mean. Like, would they do it? Fuck yeah, they might. You never know. Mm. Like Mark Hunt has no business fighting anymore. He's like fifty. Like bro, stop. The chin ain't there. Yeah, anymore, sure, but, but, sure. But for two million. Guaranteed to For million. two million. And he deserves two million, bro. He fucking deserves two million. Yeah. Two. So part of me is also like, I don't want the brain damage for these guys, but also I'm like, get the bag, boys. You deserve it. Yeah. So it's yeah. not torn. How do you feel about yeah. it? Yeah. I'm happy with it. Like, he's got the ability to go to box. He's the chairman now of PFL Africa, I think it is. He's the chairman. Um, he's the chairman. Um, And he's on the board representing fighters. Like... I saw a take on Twitter of someone saying, um, oh, Francis could have made way more money 
in if he stayed in the UFC, Dana offered him like more than ten million. Like he he could have he could have like made a lot. Money. And it's and no, exactly. It's like if you if you think that this is about the money, you've not been paying attention to the story remotely. This is yes. he's said at every stage of negotiations with every fucking promotion. This is not about money. He's not doing this for money. He's doing this for fighters' rights. I and mean, he wants, like, he wants some money. Oh, like, oh like, for sure. He, for sure, know, he like, wants money. I'm not, he wants like, if he, some money. Yeah, right. He's not going to fucking negotiate two million for his opponent and not anything close to that for himself. Obviously, he's yeah. the star. He's the, he's the best heavyweight in the world. You know, he's he yeah. is, by all, by all margins, the best heavyweight. Until he starts aging out and gets beaten by guys... Which we may never see because he, he might only have three, four MMA fights and then fuck off. He's like what, like thirty six? Yeah. Which I know is yeah. like a it's a, that's basically you just hitting your prime in heavyweight. But <laughs> yeah. Um. Even still, like he'll he'll get he'll go to box and he'll get knocked out in boxing, most likely. Yeah, I mean, if and he boxes then... Tyson Fury, yes, yes, he will. Yeah, I think I think any like I... solid heavyweight boxer will probably. As someone without much knowledge of boxing, I would yeah. predict that he'd get badly hurt in boxing. Yeah, I, I think the same. But he's doing it for the money, and he so, has like, like a whatever. round to knock them out with with luck when he's like sure. not gas. But as soon as he's even sweating, it's over. It's a disaster, in fact. Sure. So, but get the bag, bro. Go fucking get the yeah, bag. Yeah, no, hundred percent, hundred percent. Um. um in response yeah. to Ingarni signing with the PFL, Dana White has thrown together. Um, he's he's called up all of his friends and thrown together a card. Sort it's of a fucking quite good last card, minute. Give, give it's Dana a fucking good card. One. It's a fucking good card. Let me pull it up quickly. So at the bottom, at the bottom. This is UFC two ninety one. End of this July, I believe July twenty seven. Two ninety one. Or just a, we'll go bottom to top. Um, yeah. On the prelims, at least so far. Yep. Derek Lewis versus Douglas. I think it's Douglas De Lima. Maybe I'm fucking making that up. Douglas Lima. De, who the fuck is who the fuck is De Lima? Um, he's a heavyweight anyway. Oh. That's no. That's a Philippines Secretary of Justice. Holy shit! That's I just not... saw the other fights that are on this card that weren't announced today. Okay. Yeah, Derek yeah. Lewis is obviously one of them. But the other one, Stephen Thompson and Michael. Wonder Pereira Boy. My, yeah, I think it's Michelle. But yeah, Michelle. Sorry, sorry, Michelle. Um, that's right. I, re- I mean, I've got Stephen all day in that one, but that's a great fight. It's it's one where, like, if Michelle doesn't just completely youth bully him. Um, yeah, that's a good point. No, I don't think he Marcos was a star fight for Wonderboy. That's a really good star fight for Wonderboy. Wow, this guy's been around for a fucking while. I've never heard of this guy. My, uh, this this Delima guy. I, yeah, I'm not, I don't know. He's been around for fucking ages. No, I haven't seen him. Jesus. Yeah, yeah, I've never heard of him, but um, that's you know, maybe the Derek Lewis can get a win. Michael Chiesa, Kevin Holland, great fight. That's a that, yeah, it's a perfect fight, it, and it's one that actually tests it's one that actually tests Holland's wrestling as well, which we haven't yeah. really like. We saw it against Tim Means, but not just, like you know who's quite old. Yeah, I think this will be a where's Chiesa at too because I'm like, is he got yeah. one? I feel like he's got one foot out the door. With his other stuff in his career, he's doing well on the on the broadcast and he's doing other things. I just I question Kies's commitment to being a world champion anymore. I think he lost after that last loss. I just felt like he's like, am I giving it as much as the other guys are giving it, or am I thinking about other shit too? That's my question. Yeah, I mean, it'll I test mean, that. If he can beat Kevin Holland, that'll say a lot because Kevin Holland may not be ranked, but he should be. That's all I'm saying. Um, and welterweight's a stacked division. Stacked division. We'll get back to that. Um, Paolo Costa versus fucking Russian dude with one fight in the UFC. That's not right. Uh, so, so yeah, I mean that guy. What happened to the guy? comes up fight? Did you did you watch? What happened? Oh, oh fucking! He's looking after Eastman now. Comes up once really? Eastman. He's yeah. Oh, for fuck's sake. He's, I mean, I mean, look, man, Hamza. I'm not gonna even think about who Hamza's fighting until it gets announced, because that guy has spent his the last what fucking year sat on the sidelines shouting at fucking 
people like from Jan Blachowicz to anyone in the welterweight division, like anyone to in the three divisions. Whittaker. Yeah, not yeah, right. But like he's not Which fighting I just anyone. Would have loved because it just absolutely would have ruined him. Yeah, it would have been a great fight. It's it's one that the fans wanted, I think, more than the actual fighters. Uh, Hamzat's but... gonna be this one, by the way. Just saying. Yeah, he probably will, unless he Hamzat's fucks gonna... up the weight. Hamzat's gonna be this one. Yeah, I think so. Like, I Usman's think so. not gonna be able to wrestle him, and and I just feel like, yeah, I just yeah, Hamzat's gonna beat him in the feet. And I I, I think we're gonna start really seeing Usman slide off now. I don't I, I've like that fight for Usman at all. Not at thirty six. I've been not at I've been bro. what are we? I've doing? been strongly on the train of please retire Usman for a while. Um, yeah. I think yeah. after that second Leon loss, that's that's where you call it a day. Yeah. And and if you're fighting, you're not talking... fighting people like Hamza Shamai. No, no, for sure. But he's been talking. You're fighting for a Wonder while Boy about... for fun. You know. Yeah. Right. But I mean, I mean, yeah. I mean, I hate that fight too because it's just Wonder Boy get wrestled. Yeah. But you know. But I, but I'm saying if you're Usman and if you're yeah. like Usman's friends and family. It's like, just fight Wonder Boy. It's number yeah. seven, you're one. It's not a big deal. You're not, you've, I don't, you're not going to retire even... anytime soon. Just have fun. Or just you're not going to get hurt. You know, you're not going to get... Some of... If you fight Stephen Thompson, new... you can fight another couple of fights. If you yeah. fight Hamzat, you're like, you might have one left after that. You got your yeah. ass kicked. I, know, I don't even hate like him fighting some of the new upcoming welterweight talent. Like, you know, if Jack Della gets past... Whoever Sean he's booked Brady. with, Sean Brady. Ooh, you know, would maybe like that fight. Fight before he fights Usman. Yeah, I like but I'm, I'm... I'll tell you who I don't want fighting each other because you've got two young hot prospects at welterweight right now, and it's Ian Gary and Jack Della Maddalena. Yeah, I'm fucking loving those two. Excited for yeah. those. Keep them away from each other. Keep yeah. them away from each other. That's that's the next generation fight for like a title. Yeah. Jack Della yeah, defending. as of right now, Gary, big, yeah, big Gary fan of them. Never be champion, but but shout out to ah. Ian Gary because big fan. He's improving out of sight right he's now. He's improving so much. Yeah, like he beat the shit out of D Rod, bro. He beat the fucking piss out of him. Out of D Rod. Yeah. He's like 24, yeah. 25 years old. Yeah, no, Gary. Gary's right. I mean, and he called the shot. You know, he said exactly how he was going to do it. Um, I know yeah, we're sort of jumping all over the place a little bit, but I feel like that—that's what this episode's going to be. We can't really yeah. be straight with it. There's so much that's happened in the last. There's so much, yeah. So we're, let's just go all over the place until we're done. Yeah, no, fuck it. I'm, I'm happy. This, this is the fuck it episode. Yeah, let's get it I'll all out. A few weeks off until I fight. And then we can come back, and it's full steam ahead <laughs> until our fight. I love that you'll, you'll put me in there. Mate, you probably it's a team. This is a team sport, Okay, I cool. To tell you. It's when you get tired, we're all you a part of the in. fight. We're all a part of the fight. Um when we get the fight done. When we get the dub. We bring back the dub. Um <laughs> But yeah, Ian Gary, um big win. Yeah, really just happy. like he just really happy set play. completely set up the the right body kick. And mm-hmm. as soon as D Rod started blocking with both his hands, went upstairs, knocked him out immediately. Just straight yeah. out. Um, First round. You know, stumbling back to the fence. And he's like a smart finisher as well. He sort of got on top and made sure he was landing with all of his follow-up blows. Yeah. Um, just, you know, when, when Ian Gary came into the UFC, he was clearly trying to be someone he's not. He was very clearly, he very clearly was trying to emulate that Conor McGregor um feel you know he came in and was like oh yeah i'm the next fucking guy yeah just watch and then he had two kind of not super impressive performances and then he had a break and he went and had a kid yeah and he took it like a year off and that that break was great because his last two fights have been phenomenal yeah no 100 percent. he's been he's improved so much i said last fight i said i said his last fight um he had the sort of shine of McGregor in it in terms of how he fought that fight. It was a lot of fainting. It was a lot of pressuring his guy up to the fence, hitting him with something, getting out, hitting, you know, lots of kicks, um, lots yeah. of sort of, what you know, two-punch combinations and then getting out. And he just, over the course of the fight, broke that guy down. Um, yeah. And this fight was just showed that he has 
he can fight in different ways. You know, this this wasn't a pressure faint sort of paralysis by analysis sort of fight. This was a fight which saw him pick up on a tendency in camp and execute that perfectly. And he's just shown to be like clearly very coachable, clearly very intelligent as a fighter. Mm. Um just and and also just like athletic skilled you know everything you want in a young up and coming prospect and i th- i really think having that kid has matured him in terms of how he thinks he's being now. himself he has to be yeah. himself he's being and, and... he's being himself but more than that he's not i don't think pushing himself as hard as maybe he was trying to when he first came in and was trying to make a big splash. But but that's what you do when you're being yourself. When you're comfortable, and it's because yeah, he's sure. comfortable with himself now. And when you're, the older you get, the more comfortable you get with yourself, if you're lucky. You know, if you work hard. Yeah. Someone like him, that that's what happens. And he's come into himself. Um, and that just makes you push that shit less. Because you're comfortable. Yeah. And you don't yeah. need to try too hard. Because you're like, no, this, me, that's enough. And I like this Ian Gary. Oh, I'm such a fan. He's funny. He's chill. He's just a guy you could have a yarn with. Just, Mm. you know, (laughs) like, love it. Yeah, such a fan. So, rooting for him. He's ranked number 13, Jack Della 14. Um, Obviously, Della's got Brady next. Who um, do you want to see Ian Gary fight next? Oh, let's pull up the World's Weight Rankings. I don't hate... My initial thought was the winner of RDA versus Luque, which is a fight that we haven't talked about, but that's been booked. That has Rafael been booked. Rafael Dos Anjos versus Vicente really good Luque. Fight. Yeah. Should he fight the loser of that? I said winner, but... Okay, let's go winner. Fuck it. Yeah. Just cause I just because I think I think if RDA loses, then he's back in the unranked. And it doesn't make it doesn't make any sense for Gary to fight someone unranked. No, I agree. Whereas okay. let's say, let's if RDA that, wins, he, yeah. I like the RDA fight too. That's a real test. That's a real gritty test for for Ian Gary. Yeah. I also I don't I really don't hate Neil Magny. Um It's a good call which out. Is That's a really who good he called call out. out. Yeah, and it's a call out that shows that you're willing to fight the guys that no one really wants. Like no one really wants to fight Neil Magny because he's awkward. Right. He's awkward. He's hypnotic. He gets you sort of engaged in clench battles you don't want to get engaged in, and will just sort of kill you there slowly. Yeah, and he's and not gonna he's like... not gonna have a bomb burner with you. He's gonna just sort of savvily sap you of your sort of will Spirits. to fight. And yeah, it, like it's it's a. A Neil Magny loss is quite a depressing one a lot of the time, and yeah, like it's it's really in the sense yeah, demoralizing. Like seeing some seeing a prospect that you're a fan of lose to Neil Magny, it's like oh fuck, they're just not there yet. Yeah, and it's a shame. And you it's don't a, want to see it's that. a cool it's a cool call out from Gary to have the will to prove himself against that sort of guy. You know, to want to actually get out there and show, like, no, I'm not like these prospects who will fall at the foot of Neil Lackney. I'm actually going to get out there and... Put in the work. Fuck and it. win against this. Yeah, and like and win against the guy that no one really wants to fight. It's not a bad... Like, I don't mind Ian Gary's style and size and way he fights. It's not a bad matchup for him to win. It's winnable. Yeah, it's yeah I think it's winnable. Fight. I think it's super um, winnable. Yeah, and then you're looking at mid-top 10 to, like, almost top 5. Mm-hmm. Um, sorts of guys for them if they get a good win and then who knows then you're off to the races number one contender fights title shots shit like that for Jack Diller and Ian Gary I think yeah. they're both on the come up and I'm rooting for them both to get there yeah no I hope you know, so I, I hope they both sort of there. yeah I feel like because I mean well I was talking about this on Twitter a while ago but um, welterweights in a real changing of the guard. Even more, like, I thought it lightweight is. was in a changing of the guard, um, but it's honestly, really Poirier, Poirier and Gaethje have staked their claim at the top. Um, and proven in, it. Like, in quite, and yeah, proven they, they, it. Yeah. It's not like they're just hanging out there. They're no, beating. which is what they were. Six months ago, they were just fucking about at the top, and they looked like they were going to just sharply start declining. 
but yeah. those guys both have like, both Fuck shown. Up, we're motherfuckers. Yeah. yeah. I. Um, but welterweight. Welterweight. You've got guys like Colby Covington at the top, who's going to start aging out soon. You've got guys like Kamara Usman, who I would argue. Who? Who is that? I didn't know is who that already... is. No, exactly. It, when right. has he fought but... recently? Has he fought in the last seven years? He's <laughs> not fucking anywhere. Like, like Usman's already aging out. Covington's going to start. It's hard to, again, it's hard to get a read on how bad Covington really is now because we never fucking see him. Um, Bilal Muhammad is 36. Like, that's not, you know, a ni- as much as he's just hitting a stride, that's not a nice Muhammad's age for a while to wait. The gear. I'm just <laughs> Allegedly. <laughs> Allegedly. <laughs> no, this is what I, my one man's opinion. Whoa. What man's opinion? You sort of went a bit robot there. That was interesting. Did I? You sort of went a bit robot there. Well, it's because I am a robot, Gaz. And everything I say should be taken as such. (laughs) Um. (laughs) Just the matter of factness with which you said that. Yeah, that's true. Um, It's called Space Bait. I'm an honest guy. Gilbert Burns, half his body (laughs) got torn to pieces. Yeah, that um, wasn't. I didn't like that. So at all. he's he's gonna go. Didn't like that at all. Stephen Thompson's basically gone. That was not as that enjoyable of a card. Let's be honest. No. And I love that the no. new, that Henry from just running his fucking mouth has convinced the new generation of MMA fans that he's like the best of the best ever. Like people are like, man, like Aljo beating Henry in a close fight, like he shouldn't be down himself. Like that's Henry Cejudo. I'm like, I, what the fuck are you all talking about? It's just no, no, I know, no, I, I disagree like, with you. He I is disagree not with you there. in the top he should ten of all time. Himself. He's not in the top twenty all time. Oh man, I you're so fucking robotic. It's Henry. crazy. Is it? Is it? My, I'm just gonna. I'm gonna. Is it my mind? I'm just gonna leave the call and rejoin very quickly because you're okay. you're like so. I'm sounding like probably. a robot. <laughs> That's a really funny response to what I just said because it's exactly what I just did. Yeah. Hold on. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Oh my goodness. Am I still a robot, Gaz? I'm leaving this in. I'm not editing this out. I'm not editing Ooh, it. I can't hear I'm if you're talking. I'm connecting. I'm just going to keep going. Because if I don't, I have to edit it. And I don't want to edit it. You know? Um, yeah. It's Gaz's internet, ladies and gentlemen. And this is a thing... Tries to. They always try to blame the Australian, and the Australian internet. And yeah, we don't have the best internet, but it's this motherfucker here that continuously has the issues. It's not me. It's the English guy, and he's to blame. Oh, yes. are you there? Hello, you I'm here. Hello, I'm here. Can you hear me? There he is. I can hear you, mate. Good. There we I are. Can hear you. Okay. No more robots. No more no robots. More robots. What I was saying was I don't read Henry Cejudo like all you fucks do, and I called. I do winning, and the fact that it was a split decision is a load of rubbish. Aldo oh, it's bollocks. the first four rounds of that fight. Yeah, forty nine, forty six, clear Aljo win to me. Exactly what I thought. Big deficit in the clinch. The in look at the stats, look at the numbers, the knees to Aljo. That clinch work. It's where I thought the difference. It's where I thought it, he could finish him. Didn't do that, but the the knees to the body. He was just landing more. Better shots, better selection, more damage. I thought he was better everywhere. Henry definitely had his moments, especially in that fifth round, like showing the heart of a champion. And I respect Henry, but I I don't rate him like everyone else fucking rates him. I think Aljo was supposed to win. Aljo should have won, and Aljo clearly won. That fight was not that close. I don't know where this close fight nonsense has come from. Okay, I disagree. Um... Okay. I mean, I agree I have the same scorecard as you. I have the same... I don't think Henry Zahudo is, like, the best ever. What I do think Henry Zahudo is is a smart fighter who knows how to beat the people he's fighting. Um, I watched his whole career back over... in the sort of run-up to this fight. And... Firstly, lo- he lost to DJ. Um, well, secondly... Well, secondly... Both times. Both times. Like... Finish yeah, the first agreed. time and then beaten again by decision the second time because DJ's the real goat. But anyway, but but I also think his fights at bantamweight. He, I mean, his particularly his fight with Cruz was one that I was like, this is a guy who knows how to beat Dominic Cruz. You know, he's yeah. push. He's pushing him back. 
um, and he's kicking the fuck out of his legs whilst he's on the cage and he can't like retract them, which is what yeah. rather than traditionally checking kicks, Cruz likes to draw his lead leg back and switch dance and counter or something. Yeah. Um, like he he's very clearly a fighter who researches and has good fight IQ. Um, that being said, this fight, I uh, yeah, I I I think it was close. I think you could give Henry Zahudo round two as well. I didn't, but I think you can. Um, yeah, I, I, uh, yeah, sure, I, sure. I'm with you. I'm with you. I had the first four rounds for Sterling and the fifth round for um, Henry for for Zahudo, Yeah, and and me too. You know what the the people that. It's it's interesting because O'Malley rewatched the fight. He initially scored it for Cejudo, and he rewatched it, and he had four. He had the first four for Aljo as well. Um, yeah, and I, I've sort of over time seen a lot of people start coming around to an Aljo forty nine forty six. Yeah, it's because people liked Henry more than Aljo yeah. and wanted Henry to win, and were just telling themselves that Henry won, which happens sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes. Sometimes there's real robberies. Like Volk and Islam, where Volk obviously won. In fact, dominated that fight for all sure. five rounds. Every minute of every round, in fact. But, um, you know, your revisionists will try to tell you that Islam won. That's just not true. But <laughs> anyway. You, yeah. Um, what you, There was a big sort of narrative that came out of that fight, um, mm-hmm. in particular, which was... The front headlock and how Aljamain uses being on the bottom front headlock, um, and the sort of thing he does where he sort of quad pods up and you mean so he doesn't get hit in the head and he can get up safely and create distance. Yes, that's exactly yeah. what I mean. Yeah. Um, um, what's wrong? A lot of that? people saying, "Well, that is my this is my point." Um, a lot is of he breaking the rules? Is that, that illegal he's... to do? Is he a lot of people. Oddly, saying that he's trying to bait a foul, he's trying to bait people to knee him, which I think no, is he's hilarious. trying to create distance but... safely, and he's moving <laughs> yeah. his head. And his head moving is what fucking idiot is looking at that? Him moving his head, going, oh, he's trying to egg him on for a knee. no. He's trying to dodge <laughs> punches to the ground, yeah, or yeah. or them grabbing his head, yeah, and actually holding him there and then punching him or then getting a lock on. So he's always moving his head for that reason whilst moving back to create space so he can stand up safely without taking shots or getting caught in a grappling exchange where he's on he's in the bad position. What fucking idiot is like, oh, he's sitting there like a matador. Like, you're a fucking yeah. asshole. No, I Like, I he just wants agree. to foul. Yeah. Like, what... F- it, what too fucking many people, fighter wants to get knee in that head? Too many people watch this sport now, Gaz, and too many people that watch the sport have never trained one fucking minute. They have no, no idea what they're watching. They don't know what they're looking at. And that's, honestly, 50% of people that watch MMA these days. They I'm don't so know what they're watching. They don't have any clue what they're watching to say shit like that. And they yeah. think fighters are, like, scared. None yeah. of them are scared of each other. Like, when people are like, he's dodging the... F- You're a fucking moron. None of them are scared of anybody. And if you think anyone's scared of someone, you you don't know. You don't know what you're watching. And if yeah, you think look, he's I'll, trying I'll to bait a foul... Bait a foul? Yeah. Like, yeah, sure, maybe that's happened, but those people aren't world champions. You know, no one that does that has won a world title. That's yeah, I'll like tell you, what. you see on a prelim and and Dana cuts them immediately after they do dumb shit mm-hmm. like that. I'll tell you, what, Sterling, Sorry, I'll tell you what Sterling I'll tell you what Aljamain Sterling doesn't want to happen is for him to be kneed in the head. Because oh my God. sure, he'll get the fucking a, like sure, he'll get the fight, right? He'll get the he'll get the win on his record. But A, he'll get a rematch. And B, he'll basically get fucking knocked out if he can't continue because of an illegal knee. And and D, then, as if he him pretending he doesn't care about what people say online, imagine the online hate he'd get. You think he wants that yeah. shit again? No, no, fucking Jesus. Oh my god, um, how thick are you? But it's like it that like, you know, an illegal knee to the head is like a career changing injury like a career changing knockout Poten- blow. Potentially. Potentially. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like but yeah, that's what I mean. Like it's not you know, it's not an eye poke or a groin Fuck. shot where you can so you can you know you can pretend you got fucking need in the groin i'm glad i don't see some of this stuff time. and i 
I have you to come in and tell me, oh, did you see this online? I'm like, no, who the fuck says shit like that? Yeah. It's honestly, it dude, like, me. more people, more people than you would believe. Like, it's something I've seen, you know, what, four, what's some five other times a day. Dumb shit you've seen online? Hmm. Like, who thinks that? Uh, that's been the main one. Um, yeah. There's been rumors, actually, of a booking between. Um, what's his face? Um, Corey Sanhagen and Umar Namagamedov, and the the Dagestani fan club takes on that have been fun. Just seeing people oh. like, oh well, you know, everyone's ducking Umar. No, no, no one wants to fight him. And now, as soon as he gets like offered a a top ten rank, people are like pretending that he doesn't deserve it. But how can he get into the top ten? And it's like, sorry, Corey's number three. <laughs> He's he. Corey is number I don't three. think. I don't think Umar's even in the top 10. What the fuck has Umar done to get that fight? He should be yeah. fighting someone, you know, someone like... Where where even is he? Fucking... There he is. Someone like Song Yadong. So it's a bit different to people, like, not knowing what they're looking at. No, for sure, like, for sure. And maybe some of them are for real, but I feel like... It's like you talking to me about Vault. I'm going to say some original sure. shit if it was Vault. Or sure, any Australian, yeah. really. If, like, they offered Jack Della um, Colby and they announced it as a main event, and everyone's like, what the fuck is Jack Della? I would have been like, well, nah, bro, I don't know. Like, yeah, I reckon he's going to be the world fair. champ. You know? Like, would I be serious? No. Be a bit tongue-in-cheek. Maybe these people are for real. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe they're just, yeah, I'm just... Know, mental. They got no, that's, that's like, that. charging no, that... by the moon. They're, they're into the woo-woo type shit, you know? Yeah, no, that is totally fair. That is totally fair. Um, I mean, they're still fucking delusional, but I get yes. it. Um, yeah, Tony Ferguson's back fighting Bobby. Green oh, that is love. such a shame, isn't it? Love that fight, but Bobby. Do Green you love actually that. love that fight? I do sort of love that fight. Why? Do you hate Tony Ferguson? Oh, I love Bobby Green. <laughs> That's a <laughs> fight. Um, yeah, big, I'm a I think... big Bobby Green fan, bro. I don't think Tony Ferguson is ever going to win a fight again. I don't and that's... think he's capable of it. And that Nate Diaz fight showed me that. Yeah, exactly. The Nate Diaz I fight, think he's he just physically so fucking bad. Not the same. I no. just think he's God, physically no. not the same. Like, I don't think he can do it anymore physically. It was rapid. No. It was fast, but it was done. Just too much damage. There is... Age has come up. He's got to stop. Like it was a really rapid, bad decline. He can't be fighting. And Bobby Green is a savage. Mm. He's a savage. Yeah, and he's like Bobby Green is someone that a prime Tony Ferguson would have walked through. I think, you know, it would have been a violent fucking mauling, um, where Bobby Green lands a lot of punches but just gets his face torn to ribbons in the process. Yeah. Um, but. Now I don't. I mean, the the one, the big one for me is Tony Ferguson trying to do any of his spinning shit. If you see him do any of his spinning shit, where he, as people walk towards him, he sort of like turns away, looks behind him, and then like comes around for a really quite quick spinning elbow, um, or back fist or whatever you know, what have you. Usually elbow. Um, if you look at that in the Nate Diaz fight, it's so, so plodding and slow. And, you know, it wouldn't have even hurt Diaz to be hit by any of those. It would have sort of just yeah. slid across the face and tickled his nose a bit. You know, it's he's so very clearly lost the, the snap that made Tony Ferguson work. There are some fighters that you, that can go without the snap. But with someone whose whole game was doing damage and really hurting people and making people fucking hate being in there with him, he needed that quick sort of that that quick snap to his shots, yeah. um, and he just doesn't have that anymore. And so all that happens is that he walks forward as punching bag and throws stuff that doesn't really damage you. Yeah. Mm. Mm, yeah, it's yeah, it's sadder than I thought. Now you've convinced. Yeah, it's a it's a I I I really you hope switched my person. stance, Gaz. <laughs> if you will. Sorry. It's like the name of the show. It is. It is the name of the show. Wow. Yeah. 
Leo DiCaprio meme. Oh my god, you did not just do that. <laughs> I've just yeah, noticed that they have a little soundboard on Discord. Um, oh, I wonder if that played. So... Wouldn't have played. You, you... It wouldn't have played. Oh, that's no, really upsetting. Oh, that's it was just the same effect that Gaz. I'll probably, <laughs> I'll probably won't put it in. No, don't, don't don't put it in. I regretted it immediately. Yeah. But um, yeah. that's good. At least I can just annoy you with that, and it not it not come on with the podcast. That's oh, great. God, that's, yeah, that's that is really annoying. Um, what else is the news? <laughs> what what else? What else is there? Um, you know what? I think after that Umar fight. Oh no! You know what? We didn't even fucking talk about the final two fights on that July card. Um. Which are Jan Blahovic versus Alex Pereira is the first. Yeah, that's I love that fight. Alex Pereira. It's an awesome fight. Win that fight too. Really? Because you you are the only person that I've seen picking Pereira so far. I have Pereira. I'm not sure, and the reason I'm not sure is because Jan Blahovic is a leg checking machine. He's so good at that. I, I you, you know, it was it was Pereira the big thing that gave Izzy fits trouble. Two oh five so much better than Izzy ever could. Yeah, I agree. And I I think Jan has actually dropped in the last couple of years from where he was. I mean, I would fucking hope so. He's is he forty now? Yeah, like I think that if Izzy fought Jan again now, it would be a different fight. Okay, we're talking about Alec Pereira, Jan Blahovic. Yes, we were. The crash. Sorry, am I? Um, yeah, my recording software crash. That's all right. Um, you well, at least you might. Saying... We're not sure if we have your video from before, but we no. have your audio. So yes. Hopefully, you can see you now at the very least. Yeah. But um. Hopefully. Yeah. Look, I've I've got Alex winning that fight. Father times. Yes. Yeah. I I. There's a couple of things that make me nervous, and it's. Well, there's three things really, and a it's Blahovic is very good at checking kicks. It's mm-hmm. B that Pereira is coming off a bad knockout and he's been he's what three months removed from it? It was April, so yep. what yeah, May, June, sure. July. He's three months removed from that knockout. Sure. It makes me yep. makes me nervous that he's coming back that soon. And yep. the final thing is that Blahovic will at least try and wrestle him. You've got to think, like Blahovic sure. is isn't the sort of fighter as much as light heavyweight is the sort of division where people just won't fucking bother to wrestle Pereira um, until it's too late. Yeah. Blahovic is I the mean, kind of guy I think, who will. I think Alex is going to get it with knees. I can, yeah, I can see that is the thing that's in my head. Yeah. That's what, that's his path to victory. Yeah. For me. Knees and uppercuts um, are, are his weapons here. Um, in a fight like this, um, but you're right. We'll see. We'll see. Um, and then Justin Gaethje, Dustin Poirier to the rematch for the BMF title for some reason. That's yeah. Silly. Are you not excited by the Jorge BMF Mar- title? No. It was oh, funny shame. the first time at the time for the Jorge and Nate <laughs> stuff, but this doesn't need it. This doesn't need it. Lightweight no, but- is the division of divisions. And the fact that two guys like Poirier, excuse me. <coughs> oh. Oh. Big news that Poria and Chandler are main eventing a pay per view against each other just shows the star power that Lightweight has. It's the division where you just have two contenders that aren't Conor McGregor sure. or Nate Diaz that can main event a pay per view. You know, that's a big deal. Yeah, it's, I mean, they, they just. To Poria Chandler. They just think. Poria um, Gechi. They just think that they need a belt on the line. For big fights, that's all that it is. Uh, sadly, um, yeah, no, they just they just you convinced. don't need this fight. Doesn't need this fight sells pay per views. I agree. Yeah, the whole card. This, this fight, this fight's incredible. And this is a fight that I would like. I always the what sort of metric I use when I talk about um, how fights do to like casual audiences. As I've just got housemates that don't watch fights on the like they don't watch fights like I watch fights. Um, yeah, but you know every big event or pay per view. We'll all get get in the living room and watch a fight together, and so th- they will want to watch this fight. They will be happy that this is headlining. Um, yeah, this is an incredible fight. Five rounds. The Five only rounds of this. The fight, only yeah. shitter really is altitude. that it's at altitude. 
So, yeah, I saw you tweet that. It's great which tweet. is just, it's just a real shame because every time that there's a fight at altitude, a you don't get. I don't think you get a fair look at who's the better fighter. Because it it very quickly uh, it very quickly I becomes I th- I do I I think it very quickly becomes a cardio battle. Um, but that's part of it, bro. To me, I think that's to me. I think that's as much part. Of, that's how hard did you train? How hard did you work? Who's the hardest sure, worker? Sure, that's what shows up. And to me, that's as important. It's just as, you know if you. It can't just be skill for skill fighting, bro. It has to be work. I know. I and that I... come and that comes into it. And I think. You, whoever works the hardest in training camps gonna win this fight. I guess. I just think I know that, that sounds simple, but I, I really, I really think that about this fight. They're I, so equal in so many ways. They're both smart guys. They're both veterans. Yeah. I mean, I think Dustin's got this again. I think so too. Um, and the thing that informs that for me, at least, is altitude. I think that Gage is someone that we've seen slow down in you know third, fourth yeah. rounds of fights a lot. And at altitude, I can see that happening a lot quicker and Poirier finishing him sort of early. Yeah, agree. Agree. I'm Um, excited. Yeah, I'm excited for that. I'm excited for Poirier to have another fake belt around his waist. Okay. (laughs) Poirier's. I love Poirier. I love love, love Poirier so much. Um, It's just just funny. (laughs) It's just funny that they've they've got to make a belt for him. Yeah. Yeah. Ridiculous. We've got a few week of, weeks of underwhelming cards, but that's okay. We'll be back in a few weeks. Um, mm. Probably to f- after my fight, because the same weekend is um, Amanda Nunez, her next fight. So we'll uh, be back for follow-up of that and a recap of my fight and talk all about that. It's exciting times. Are we, saying, are we saying we're going to be back post 289? Is that? Y- yeah, I'd say. So uh, I'd rather say that because that'll definitely be true. Sure. Yeah. Um, and then possibly surprise them and have one before, but yeah, I'm gonna say that. Cool. Yeah, that's good. We have like yeah. a single fight to talk about there. So yeah, brilliant. Yeah, brilliant good stuff. Thanks everyone for tuning in. What were you gonna say, guys? No, I said good stuff. That's all. Oh yeah. Okay. Um. Yeah. Thank you everyone for tuning in. Be sure to like this video on YouTube if you're watching in video form. Subscribe. Switching stances. Follow us. Spotify all reputable podcast services and we'll see you in a few weeks um for another episode after my fight stay tuned to social media and to this channel for stuff leading up to the fight um if you want to watch or hear about that Uh, and we'll see you all very soon so thank you and goodbye goodbye